another day. It isn't another. It's the same day. <laughs> so I'll uh, hopefully have strength enough to like two videos today. And the next topic just dealt with functions. The next topic on the curriculum would be um, arrays. Yay! We are moving on to arrays. What are arrays? What are arrays? Arrays are basically JavaScript data types that hold values. Can usually be used to manipulate data, arrange data, basically different data types. That's basically what data. What I'm, I'm saying rubbish. Data structures. <laughs> Arrays are JavaScript data structures. They can literally be used to structure data. I'm the one that I was saying rubbish before. Things just entered my head. So um. Structure doctor in what sense you have different type of like data structures and each of these the way they store data are different. But is store data in forms of lists, right? They create a list in the order in which you input them into the arrays. Um let's jump right into it. Let's just go straight into it and create like our first array. I think you would understand it better as we start to build our arrays. So let's see. Names. Let's names. Now this variable names is going to store collections of names. But for now, let me just create array by using the array constructor. If you are using constructor for anything, object, arrays, and the rest. You would have to start with a capital letter, note that. So now I've created an array. Okay, okay, did I? Constructors are initialized with new. You learn about them when we go to classes, right? But for now, new array. I've created a name. So let's console log. Also the log name. Names. Let's see what it gives us. It gives us an empty array. Two square brackets with zero objects into it. This is an empty array. We created an empty array. If you want to create an empty array with a fixed width, right, for certain programs, Probably because different languages have different ways of there's array in almost it's like a very very popular data structure and it's almost in every language Python C plus plus although the name differs from language to language some languages like Python would call it lists JavaScript call it arrays array lists we have various names but popularly the most popular one are arrays and lists at least but they literally do the same thing um. Some fun some languages like I think C plus plus or C sharp, you have to define the the um this number like the amount of items the array would contain. So you have to define the size of the array, and you can do that also in JavaScript. So probably I want to store ten names here, not more, not less. The JavaScript is not strictly type, so I, even if I define the type, I can always exceed that type. That's JavaScript for you. Other languages would try an error. If you're using TypeScript, it would try an error. But for here, um, it won't. But you can always still define the type. So now I defined the type. It will take in, yep. Technically, it's not an array with the size of 10. So you see this comma, 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 comma in this array. This is the size 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Basically, this is an array with 10 empty spaces. But if I was to come here and put a comma, come here. I was to come here and put a comma. Now I'll create an array with two values, 10 and 2, instead of defining the type. And I can just go on and keep on putting values and putting values and putting values. Also, since this is a name array, I can put strings, John, Joseph, Mary. 
and stuff like that. And I would have an array with their name. So I've created an array using the array constructor, which is new array, then the values I want inside the array. If I don't put any values within the array constructor, it creates an empty array. If I put a number, just one number, it creates an array with a fixed size. If it's more than, if it's anything else apart from just a single integer, it creates an array of whatever you put into it. Some arrays, quick to note, some arrays are um, true. To make a noise. So let's see how this would turn out. As I said, JavaScript is not strictly typed, so because of that, we can create an array to different various type of values. In TypeScript, this would not be allowed because now we have a string, an integer, a boolean, and and on the in all value. So other languages too, this would not be defined because typed language, like strictly typed languages, they won't allow you to just train any types because it can get very messy. And you would you discover why later on as you move on. Right? Okay. So that's that. But in reality, nobody's going to create an array like this way. Nobody <laughs> wants to be creating an array this way. Most people would use the faster method. You know, in the last class, I said we have various ways of creating. Most times, we have various ways of creating them. But most of the time, people choose to go the easier route. Things that is quicker and easier for them to do, right? So there's an easier method, easier approach of creating an array. And that's by opening to quite the brackets. And this is an empty array. It did the same thing as creating new array with just two closed brackets. Same thing, actually. I'm coming. In. <laughs> then we can put values one, two, three. And it creates an array with one, two, three. Same thing, like same absolute everything. John, Joseph, Mary. Same to get the same thing we got. This is just another method of creating an array. Now that we know how to create an array and what arrays are, a basically list that keeps like a collection of data. So you can keep strings, values. Um, a very good example is of where you be using arrays, um, probably I want to call it like a list of people's name, right? And I don't want to be, let's, I don't want to be initializing a lot of variables. Let John be called to John the string. Let me be called to Mary the string. Stuff like that. And array will be like a very, very, very good way to do that. Like it's, it saves a lot of time, basically, using arrays. And once you get the hang of it, you would really, really learn to love it. And probably the most popular data structure in the world is probably an array. Um, so with that said, accessing values. So as I said, probably I want to access Joseph in this array. And I want to change it. I just want to find out what is Joseph. I don't want to print the entire array. I come here and I do console to the log names. And we use indexes to access values, and I put two. And as you can see here, we get Mary. Because Mary is not the second, but arrays are zero index, right? So if you want to access, like get the value in a particular position in one array, you have to remember. For the sake that it's zero index, John is zero, Joseph is one, Mary is two, and I entered two, so he gave me more, Mary. If I put zero, yeah, I'll get John. It's console log John. Console log this, the full names, then under it, console log John. Right? Okay. Then that's okay. What happens if we do a negative value? Undefined. 
Um, if we do a value that is outside the scope, let's say five, there's obviously no five. Just forget undefined. So if the if you go outside the given range, you get undefined because value two does not exist. But let's say I want the value to exist. I can easily just come here. Put names. Oops. Okay. Five. It's got to. Then. Right. And now we get Ben when I check here. So what it literally does is it adds values to, so if I go so four, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, four, and five. They'll not really add like parameters for four and five. They'll still return undefined. Or five would no longer return undefined because now the value, but the array would have to show space in that. The actually items there, they are not just defined, they do not just exist basically. And you see the way we easily inserted Ben into the number, the fifth position in this array, or technically the sixth position, given the arrays are zero indexed. If I put five here, you get back your Ben. Also, this isn't the only way of getting values. Okay, okay. That's the only way. I was thinking of objects. So, that's basically the only way. I remember properly. Yes, yes, yes. Objects functions a little bit different. I think in the curriculum, after arrays, oh, after arrays, we have objects. So, they are a little bit similar to this. They are also a data type. Um, a data structure, yes, a data type, not a data structure. I have to stop mixing this thing. Um, so basically, you've learned how to create an array, add values to an array, two methods now, um, access value in an array, change the value in an array. So if I was to put two here, which was Mary, and I put two is equal to Ben, this array will be changed. So I get Ben there instead of Miri. And now I created this array with 0, 1, 2, and then I came and did this position in which Miri is. I set it to quote Ben. So I assigned this position. I switched the value that the position was occupying and changed it to Ben. And now when you can log the name, you have Joseph. John Joseph Ben. <coughs> Sorry. So okay, okay. Sometimes you might an array, you might get an array probably from the server or something. I want to know the size because you might not always know the size of the array you're getting. So there's a very helpful method with this. I think crossed into array functions, right? So different array functions. I mean, Array methods, slip of tongue, very sorry. Different array methods, I should really focus. Um, first array method, um, probably the most popular and the one you use the most is length. So Names.length. It gives you the size of the array. This has three, it would give you three. Let's say I was to add the property. To give you four because now this is now one two three four you can use this to do a lot of manipulation given that you have to remember this is zero index so if you want to do manipulations with like the array and get the length you'd always have to minus one probably want to loop through this array you would learn looping later on so once you loop through this array you would have to do this thing you would have to do if you have to do through this array, you'd have to use the length, but you have to do minus one the length and to look through from there. Um, another very, very popular method you'll be using is the push. So we've previously you saw the way I added properties to like the names. There's also something we could do, something else we could do. There's a method on arrays that are called push. 
in which you can add values to the array. Add. If I come here and do console.log, as you can see, the value has increased to five. But if I do console.log names, I would get John, Joseph, Mary, Q, and Push. John, Joseph, Mary, Q, and Push. What's the push method literally does is take whatever value you pass to it and add it to the to the array, to the ending of the array, right? That's basically what the push method does. Next method we'll be looking at is on shifts, which does something similar, but let's say it was to change, um, let's call it this. So I was changes to on shifts. It's to add this add to the beginning of the array. If I when I was using push, he added it to the end of the array. Now with on shifts, he adds it to the beginning. So push adds to the end of the array. Um on shift adds to the beginning. Basically on shift the last value. Next we have pop, right? It removes the last element from the array. So, but the way pop works is it removes it then. Okay, let me just show you. I think it would be best if I showed you how pop works. It does not take in any parameter, unlike. Now you see, you get John. Okay, this is the value. You get John, Joseph, Mary. This queue has been popped, it has been removed, and the value is now three. One interesting thing about pop is you can get it's used to get the last value of an array. So let's last vowel put you. And if I should console log last vowel. When I pop, last vowel is not going to be Q. Okay, so you see when I console logged this, I got Q because pop removes the value and sends it back to any variable that has been assigned to it. So it's a very good way to get the last value. And also remove the last objects from the from the array. Then after we have shifts. Which is very similar to you saw the way we had push then pop, then we have on shifts, then now we have shifts. <laughs> we just what um which does what pop does what, but now to the beginning of the array. So shift on shifts, pop push, basically add and remove. Shift removes the first elements of the array and returns the value. Then I've already the, out of those two, the one you'll be using the most is most like the push. And you'll be using push, you'll be using length, sometimes on shift. Another very popular array method that you'll be using a lot is index of, right? So um I want to get the index of Joseph. I know Joseph is in this array. But I do not know where its position is. Or oh, I need I need to search the array for a Joseph. I've been told before and that a Joseph exists. I don't know his position. So I do this. The position funnily is one because this is zero, this is one. The index of Joseph is one. Let's say, okay, let me use Mary instead. Because if if I search a name that does not exist, it will return minus one and uh, you get the points. Oh, sorry, I have to like index this. So position of Mary is let me log this out. Position of Mary is two. 
these links I've already console logged it out. But let's say I will search for ma, which does not exist in this array. It's return minus one as per it can't find this value. And this comes very useful if you are given strings. If you're given a word, you can use like index of the say string method. I use index of to find probably in a string, I need to find like a particular word that exists in this sentence. Can you say the convert the sentence into an array or into like a long string and use index of to find the position of that word? And if that word does not exist in that string, it returns minus one, which you can write the condition for, right? And um do whatever probably you are looking for sensitive words, things like fuck and stuff like that. You can easily use it to create a very simple word filter of some sort. Um then let's see, we're getting to the end. You can also check if probably I want to check if I was given a variable. I want to check if this variable is an array. There is a method called this array. I can use to check. If sorry, I'll see the array constructor here. That is array names. So that should return true. Can you just check if this thing, if an array is true, if the value I probably okay. Let's say, because names is an array. Let's name. Use name, not an S. Let's join there. Now let's remove that and do this. I'll get the false value, because name is not an array, it's just a string. I was to add an S, I'll get true because that is an array. So basically, there are like mm, lots and lots and lots of like array methods. I might have used a lot of lots, but they are really you can you can learn most of them. But the thing is, I wouldn't miss it if I do not think I know all array methods like off head, off and whatever term they use. So sometimes I also go back, Google some things when I'm solving algorithms, check. But it's the very basic ones like push, put, pop, all those type of stuff that you use regularly. Eventually, it will become like muscle memory. You would always remember them. But the rest, not so important ones that exist after this, um, you really might not be using them. But it's very good to know what they are and what they do. Because sometimes you might be faced with the problem and there might be a method that can solve it. If you are aware that there is something like that, then it will be easier for you to like. It will be easier for you to go online and search and tackle the problem easier than you have no clue and you get frustrated and start having poster syndrome and some other weird negative effects. And with that, we end our class on arrays. Next, we have objects. Uh, Hi guys, it's the next time. I'm already tired. <laughs>